So it's that time of the year again, the day to remember SDS 51L, the crew of the Challenger. Krista McAuliffe, a 37 year old high school social studies teacher teaching economics, American history and government was going to be the first ever teacher to go into space. This day is about her and six others. On one of the most hardest days to understand in my childhood. I remember when I was in fourth or fifth grade, my teacher, Mrs. Cook, she knew I was a shuttle fan. I was always doodling in her class. I would draw rockets, shuttles, all sorts of space pictures and planets. Back then, your favorite teacher was like family. They could take you out on a small private field trip and parents didn't even have to know about it. That was Miss Cook, my favorite teacher and a hero of mine. Well, on that day, in January 28th, she told us, pack up your stuff. We're gonna go see this launch over at the Cape. It was the first launch I was ever going to see up close. And I think Mrs. Cook actually wanted to go to space. So why did NASA pick teachers to go into space in the first place? Well, in 1984, President Reagan announced the Teacher in Space Project, a NASA program meant to honor teachers while inspiring students, getting them excited about STEM and spaceflight. The program opened its doors to teachers to go into space as non-astronaut workers. Around 11,000 teachers applied, but NASA only accepted two, McCullough from Concord, New Hampshire, and Barbara Morgan, an elementary teacher from Idaho. Even in space, McCullough was required to make up some lesson plans. That way she could go ahead and teach kids back on Earth while she was up in space. With this, she might be able to capture some inspiration or perhaps some future astronauts. Challenger was one of six space shuttles in the fleet. STS-51L, as they named the mission, was the 25th mission of the space shuttle program. It was meant as a routine mission, meant to launch a satellite, but part of the mission was the crew wanted to check out Halley's Comet for six days. The crew consists of Commander Dick Scobie, Pilot Michael Smith, Ronald McNair, Mission Specialist Ellison Onizuka, Judith Resnick, and Payload Specialist Gregory Jarvis, and McAuliffe was also classified as a Payload Specialist. It was January 28, 1986 at Cape Canaveral, Florida. A cold and icy morning. Liftoff was delayed. About 17% of Americans were watching this launch live on television, according to CNN. At 11.38 local time, everything looked normal as Mission Control told Commander Scobie, Challenger, go with throttle up. However, just 73 seconds after liftoff at an altitude of around 46,000 feet, disaster. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, 9 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 7 nautical miles. Looks like a couple of the uh, solid rocket boosters uh, blew away from the side of the shuttle in an explosion. here looking very carefully at the situation obviously a major malfunction all communications with the crew was lost the shuttle had no escape system once it was in flight so the crew remained in the nose cone strapped to their seats as they were falling Americans back on the surface watched in horror you see concern etched on their faces the breath that they've been holding released and then the realization sets in that something is wrong. I was one of them. Mrs. Cook was trying to get us to lift off, but we just got to here. A little boat dock about 10 or 15 miles away from the Cape. We pulled over as we began to see the plumes of fire coming over the horizon. It had lifted off and it was my first launch I would ever see in person, at least up close. I was so confused, scared and worried. What did I just witness? Mrs. Cook quickly told us to get back in the car and we started heading back to school. I remember looking back through the windshield, watching major chunks still falling back to earth. It was a very quiet drive back, definitely a difference than how it was 
just minutes earlier. So, it was when we got back from school and turned on the TV that we all realized that the external tank was the one that exploded. But the crew compartment, later we noticed, was still intact. They got as high as 12 miles in the sky. And in just three minutes, they hit the water in about 207 miles per hour. Everyone knew that the crew were dead immediately. All of it happened so fast, even on the replays. After a swift investigation, NASA determined that the cause of the disaster were in the rubber O-rings of the right solid rocket booster. Apparently the cold caused them to fail and not seal properly. This caused a breach in the rocket solid booster joint, which caused gas to reach the external fuel tank. NASA and the Navy recovered the remains of the crew and were flown to Dover Air Force Base in Delaware on April 30th for funeral arrangements. And the families later helped to establish the Challenger Center of Space Science Education in their memory. NASA put the shuttle program on hold for three years after the disaster. The Rogers Commission who investigated what went wrong concluded that NASA had straight up gotten sloppy with running things, including violating safety rules and ignoring warnings from engineers about launching when it was too cold. So now, due to the Apollo 1, the Challenger wasn't the only American tragedy. The space shuttle program was canceled, preventing the United States from going into space. President Reagan had scheduled his State of the Union address on the same day. Unfortunately, under the circumstances, he instead scrubbed his speech and addressed the American people personally in one of the most popular speeches in American history. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd planned to speak to you tonight to report on the State of the Union. But the events of earlier today have led me to change those plans. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. Nineteen years ago, almost to the day, we lost three astronauts in a terrible accident on the ground. But we've never lost an astronaut in flight. We've never had a tragedy like this. And perhaps we've forgotten the courage it took for the crew of the shuttle. But they, the Challenger 7, were aware of the dangers, but overcame them and did their jobs brilliantly. We mourn seven heroes. Michael Smith, Dick Scobie, Judith Resnick, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Gregory Jarvis, and Krista McAuliffe. We mourn their loss as a nation together. The families of the seven, we cannot bear as you do the full impact of this tragedy. But we feel the loss, and we're thinking about you so very much. Your loved ones were daring and brave, and they had that special grace, that special spirit that says, give me a challenge, and I'll meet it with joy. They had a hunger to explore the universe and discover its truths. They wished to serve, and they did. They served all of us. We've grown used to wonders in this century. It's hard to dazzle us. But for 25 years, the United States space program has been doing just that. We've grown used to the idea of space, and perhaps we forget that we've only just begun. We're still pioneers. They, the members of the Challenger crew, were pioneers. And I want to say something to the school children of America who were watching the live coverage of the shuttle's takeoff. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to follow them. I've always had great faith in and respect for our space program, and what happened today does nothing to diminish it. We don't hide our space program. We don't keep secrets and cover things up. We do it all up front and in public. That's the way freedom is, and we wouldn't change it for a minute. We'll continue our quest in space. There will be more shuttle flights and more shuttle crews, 
Yes, more volunteers, more civilians, more teachers in space. Nothing ends here. Our hopes and our journeys continue. I want to add that I wish I could talk to every man and woman who works for NASA or who worked on this mission and tell them your dedication and professionalism have moved and impressed us for decades. And we know of your anguish. We share it. There's a coincidence today. On this day, 390 years ago, the great explorer Sir Francis Drake died aboard ship off the coast of Panama. In his lifetime, the great frontiers were the oceans, and a historian later said he lived by the sea, died on it, and was buried in it. Well, today, we can say of the Challenger crew, their dedication was, like Drake's, complete. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us for the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Hit like and subscribe for more. Take care.